I get fired up about this type of stuff because I had to do this my whole life. My whole life. I had to goddamn struggle just to get noticed. My whole life. I'm still fighting to this day. Every day. Every day. I'm 35. I'm telling you, man. This making pay shit is real. Because people won't believe in you. You won't get much of opportunities. So when you do get them, you gotta take advantage of them, bro. You gotta take advantage of them. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Tyron Johnson Show, the show that helps you make them pay. My goal is to help you reach your full potential by using my make them pay mentality to take you to the next level. I'm Tyron Johnson, 14-year professional basketball player, currently playing in Nancy, France. That's in France's first division professional basketball competition. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how you can stand out on your team no matter the role. I've led many teams in scoring, many teams in scoring, ever since I started playing. After I got cut, I led the teams in scoring. When I became a pro, I led the teams in scoring. When I finally got in the game in college, I led the teams in scoring. But in my career, only two of those teams, I was the first option. And that was in Japan, and that was in Mexico. Mexico was kind of like a lower league. Um, Japan was the second division of Japan. so. It wasn't big time teams, right? But when I've played most of my career in Europe, I don't think I've ever been the number one option in Europe, ever. And I've led most of my teams in scoring, right? So obviously I did not like my role, but I found a way to flourish within my role and how to make my role bigger, how to stand out. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. I wanted to touch on this because many people would think that I was the number one option. Obviously my bigger, my biggest uh, career moment was in Blue Eye, France and when I played in Blue Eye and many would think that I was the number one options on those teams, but no, my coach didn't really believe in number one options. I had to carve my way through all of those obstacles to make myself seem like I was the number one option. I just was taking risk but the risk was working because of the thing that I'm gonna teach you today. I'll explain how I did it and how you can do it too. For me, the top three ways to stand out in your role on your team is by being the hardest worker, being a good teammate, and by getting results. So let's tack on the first topic. Be the hardest worker. To stand out, you have to be different. You cannot do what everyone else is doing. You have to be the first in the gym. You have to be the last in the gym. You have to bring the most energy on the court. You have to be the loudest on the court. You have to look weird. You know what I'm talking about? You have to be like really, really weird so that everyone is saying something's wrong with this guy. You want to stick out like a sore thumb, right? This is all the buildup. When I first meet guys, when I first get on team, the first thing I say is, oh, I'm the best player you ever played with in your life. It's a joke, but it's a way to smooth over the surface to let them know that I'm really about to try to dominate whatever I'm doing, right? And my actions start to back those things up. So I start training like the best player they're ever gonna play with. I start working in practice with them. I start challenging them to make them feel like I'm the best player they ever played with in their life. And what happens is synergy starts to create some momentum and all of a sudden things start falling in place. And as we get along with this podcast, you'll see how it all falls in place but you want to be different. You cannot be the same. You have to be the hardest worker. Whenever you're trying to stand out, you have to make your coach look at you like, oh, this guy right here is different. Your teammates look at you like, this guy is different. When the fans see you play, they're like, this guy is different. You want to be different. Let's look at a guy like Pat Beverly, right? He started off okay college career, had to go to the second division in Ukraine, 
Um, he, he did a podcast where he was talking about how he ate the same thing every day. Went from second division Ukraine, went to Greece to a mediocre team, and then went to Russia where he got paid the big bucks, right? Pat Bev was a score his whole career. He built that skill set. He was a scorer. When he got to the NBA, he carved a niche for himself and became one of the best defensive players in the league and has made him millions on top of millions of dollars. He's the hardest worker, right? They got a guy in Monaco right now, his name John Brown. For me, he's the European Patrick Beverly. He might be just 6'7 or 6'6, six, six, but he can guard the three, four, and five. The boy averaged, I think, like three steals when he played in Russia. He's the best defender in Europe, in my opinion. Right? He's about to get the big bucks. Limited offensively. But he still can score. He still can finish. He still can knock down mid-ranges. But he makes himself known. He's on diving on the court, showing on ball screens, being physical, bringing that energy, supporting, no complaining, taking charges. He's different. You know, I don't know what his work ethic is like, but to be able to, but to be able to put in those type of efforts, you have to be working hard. You have to be working hard. If you get time, Google John Brown. Most of you guys can be John Brown, but most of you guys don't want to be John Brown. Most of you guys want to be Kyrie, Steph Curry. Most of you, those guys are special. You can be me and John Brown. I've made over a million dollars playing this game. John Brown has made over a million dollars playing this game. Pat Beverly has made millions of dollars playing this game. This was something we did in the backyard. Now we're doing it for a living. So I'm telling you, to stand out in your role, you want to be the hardest working player on the court. You want to be unbenchable. You don't want to give your coach any reasons to put you on the bench. I'm always trying to be on the court. If I'm not scoring, then guess what? I'm rebounding. If I'm not rebounding, I'm assisting. I'm stealing. I'm running the court. I'm setting hard screens. There's two things that I can do. I can move the ball quickly. I can set good screens. I can rebound offensively and defensively. I can get back on defense. I can play defense and I can talk, right? I can uplift and encourage. All of these things will make me stand out in my role, which leads me to my next topic, topic number two, being a great teammate. Being a good teammate don't only help you in sports. Being a good teammate helps you also in life. Basketball, like I say repeatedly on this podcast, is that basketball is a metaphor to real life. Support your teammates. Be the loudest on the bench. Be the loudest in the game. When your teammate hit the ground, be the first to pick him up. Show enthusiasm when they do something good. Be happy when they score. Be be happy. Show total enthusiasm whenever they do something good. Make them feel very comfortable. What that does is it creates synergy and it becomes contagious. When your teammates see you doing that for your other teammates, you, your teammates start doing that for you, which boosts your com confidence, which boosts his confidence because now he's talking and now you're receiving his energy and you giving him energy. Now the team is receiving that. Now the coach is receiving that. Now the fans is receiving that. And all of that is sparked and it all started with you from a selfless act. Wanting your teammate to be the best version of themselves. If you, your teammate be the best version of themselves, that allows you to be the best version of yourself. If both of y'all are being the best version of yourselves, the team eventually have a better chance at winning. That's why I don't understand teams that are winning and have guys that want to leave. I don't understand that. It just shows me how selfish of a basketball player you are. It shows me that you're probably not as good as you think you are. It shows me that you're very delusional, right? And all of these things, it just makes sense on why guys cap out at a certain level because of these little things, right? Be a good teammate. If you're on a team where you just, your coach is just not rocking with you, teammates not rocking with you, rock with them. 
take the high road. I've taken the high road my entire career. I don't agree with most of the things that goes on around here. But at the end of the day, I'm a professional and I'm a winner. And at the end of the day, at the end of the season, all opinions about me change. Right? That's one thing I'll pat myself on the back about. All opinions about me always change because before you get to meet me, you have a preconceived notion of who I am. You know, I walk kind of weird. My energy is kind of weird. But when you start playing with me and you start seeing all the little things I do and all the, the background conversations I have, how, how hard I work, how much I support my teammates, you start seeing why a lot of my teammates speak to me even after the season. Because when you play this game, you'll quickly realize most of the guys that's your teammates, you won't ever see those guys or speak to those guys, those guys again. So be a great teammate, bro. Let's look at a guy like Dylan Brooks. The narrative around Dylan Brooks is the media is trying to create this narrative like he's this dirty player, like he is just this negative player, and they've created the narrative Dylan the villain, right? He's kind of running with it. I'm a Houston Rocket fan, but he's kind of running with it. But I get it. But if you listen to his teammates, everybody love playing with Dylan Brooks. They try to do the same with like a guy like Mike James over here. They try to say that he has an attitude or something like this. But when you see his teammates, it seems like they enjoy playing with him. Right. But when you got a guy like Dylan Brooks that's going to take on the challenge, going to play defense on the best player from the opposite team, who's going to knock down open shots, get points in transition and, and just compete like a dog. You want to play with that guy. Guess what? Guys like Dylan Brooks signs for $80 million. Yeah, the guy with no skills, the guy that, that's an average basketball player, $80 million. The guy, Mike James, who's selfish and who has the attitude, guess EuroLeague's top scorer, right? So, like, bro, you can't fall in for these narratives about these guys because these guys are team builders, right? You want to be a guy that's a team builder, not a team killer, a team builder. That's how you can start standing out in your role. Support the team and the team will support you. Treat the janitor like you treat your boss. When the janitor start pulling for you, that's when you end, man. Now you done got, you done worked hard, so you prepare. You, you prepare for the opportunity by being the hardest worker. You become a great teammate, so now you got the, the, the teammates approval, the coaches approval, the fans approval. So we starting to believe in you. Here's the third topic. Now you got to go and get results. You done put in the work. You done did the work socially with the team. You support it. Now it's time to go and get results. You need to put up numbers that confirm that you deserve a bigger role, that confirm you are that guy so that you can stand out. You can't make it close. You can't say, oh, I had a good season. I averaged 12 points. Hell no. You got to be different. I'm talking about this is how I went from seven points a game to being the MVP of the Sun Belt in college. I had to be different. You got to try to put up all the points you can get. You got to try to get all the rebounds you can get, all the assists you can get, all the steals you can get, all the charges you can get, all the blocks you can get. You got to go all out because guys and gals like me and you, we don't get much opportunities. Everything is hard for us. That's why we always have to make them pay. That's why we always have to use the doubt to fuel success because our opportunities come few and far. So whenever we get these opportunities, we got to go straight to the top. After I retired my second time and I said I was done, I came back to Blue Eye, I told my agent, I'm going straight to the top. We're going to win the MVP. I'm going to win the MVP. We're going to win the championship. I ain't got time to be playing around. Right? It was no girls that year. No, it was no no dating. It was no nothing. Besides working on my game and working on my business. My business I had made 50K just from graphic designing, parts on the side hustle. I was the MVP, won the championship, all of that because I was laser focused. So you done got prepared by being the hardest worker. You don't work with your teammates. Now you gotta get laser focused. Don't get distractions. Don't start bringing in girls and don't start drinking, late night drinking and going to the clubs and like, 
Nah, don't be sitting on the couch all day playing video games, bro. Keep doing what you was doing to get to this point. Don't get to the top of this mountain. Don't get to the top of this make them pay mountain and start looking down saying, I did something. Hell no, you ain't did shit. You just starting. You just starting. Now go get some goddamn results. Go put in the work. Go, 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 go. Who's the best player in this league? Go attack him. Who's the best player in your area? Go attack them. Make it not close. You have to have undeniable talent. It's one of my favorite songs by Boosie. I got undeniable talent, undeniable talent, right? You cannot be deniable. You have to be unbenchable. <laughs> you have to be unbenchable. We need this guy on the court. That gives you more reps. That gives you more shots to be great. Take them. Don't be afraid to fail. If you fail, it's okay. You have to take risk. If you don't take risk, you'll never know. You don't work this damn hard to not take no risk. Bro, go ahead and take some risk. Figure it out along the way. You put in the work. Everybody believe in you now. Don't be afraid to do your dribble combination. You mess up, so what? Look at film, get better. You turn it over, so what? My, my bad, guys. I get it back on defense. You miss the shot, so what? Get to the rack next time. Try to get some free throws. So what? So what? See, I get fired up about this type of stuff because I had to do this my whole life. My whole life. I had to goddamn struggle just to get noticed. My whole life. I'm still fighting to this day. Every day. Every day. I'm 35. Telling you, man, it's making pay shit is real. Because people won't believe in you. You won't get much of opportunities. So when you do get them, you gotta take advantage of them, bro. Gotta take advantage of them. Don't fall for all these distractions. I've been working since I was nine years old, four years old, playing baseball, nine years old, saying I was gonna be a pro basketball player. You, we've been doing this for a long time. Don't get here and forget the mission. So in conclusion, standing out is a difficult process. It's a very difficult process. But I just got emotional. These tears just came because it's been difficult, man, trying to persuade people that you can really play this game and still have to try to do the same thing to this day. It's hard but it's worth it. You have to be resilient. You have to be resilient. You have to accept failures. You have to accept your coworkers doubting you. You have to accept it. It is what it is. But when you become the hardest worker, the best teammate, and you get results, it's hard to be ignored. That's how you make them pay. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. Share with your friend. Like. Till next time. Every day. You make them pay. So that one day you can live a truth life. I'm out.